Um, hi, everyone. So um, I wanted to talk about the sketch data structure for quantiles in BPF, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, so at this point, uh, this is mostly a use case and some ideas about how to implement it. I started the talk with something else in my mind and I ended up elsewhere. So um, the goal here is to present a use case, sketch out some approaches and then solicit some feedback from you. Um, so I'll talk about the use case and then the data structure and then I'll kind of take a step back and look at the bigger picture. So this is, um, oh, by the way, I work on Tetragon and Tetragon is an observability system. Um, so basically we insert hooks into the kernel and we observe events and then we present them to users. And so we want to see the events and then one of the things that we would like to do is kind of create summaries of these events. And these summaries are typically statistical metrics about what are the things that are happening. And so we want to both present, present these metrics to users so that they can do pretty graphs or make decisions, but we also would like to act on these metrics. So for example, if we see that something like an anomaly is happening, then we can take a stack trace and generate an event so that we can get information to figure out the issue. And we want to maintain these summaries um, at the kernel side, which allows us both to avoid the user space coping, but also to make the decisions in line with the operation. And so what are summaries? So the typical example of summaries are things like mean standard deviations and mean max values. And these are easy to compute. Uh, it's straightforward to do it, but it's also not very useful from a statistics point of view. Uh, things like quantiles, things like the median or the tail latency are much better and provide much more information. Um, but it's also hard to incrementally maintain them. Uh, so like the naive approach would be to get all the measurements and then for the quantile, for the median, find the middle point. So you would need to basically keep all the data that you've collected, which is not a good idea. Um, so there are different data structures that try to help with that, and they are called sketches. And the basic idea is to have a constant size and then do an approximation to the result. Uh, indeed, there's already a BPF map for that, which is a sketch for a set, which is the Bloom filter. But there are others, and you can use others in different applications. In this case, I'm going to focus on the one about quantiles. So basically, you would be able to ask this data structure, give me the median of this metric, and then you would get back a value and then an approximation error about what is the range uh, of, of the error. And so uh, one of the algorithms, sorry, one of the data structures uh, I looked at is called a good digest. Um, there is a paper about it, you can read it. Uh, the important thing about the paper is that it provides two guarantees. It provides error guarantees about how big the error can be if you maintain the invariance of the data structure. And it also provides um, memory guarantees. So if you keep the invariance of the data structure, you will have both bounded error and bounded size for the data structure, which is a really good property to have. Um, it's basically a binary tree that maintains ranges uh, on, on the nodes. Um, so I selected this data structure and see how far I could get. Um, so it, it looks like that. So basically you have the root node that keeps a range in these cases from zero to one K and then you branch out. And for each node you maintain how many elements you've seen for this particular range. So for this range, we've seen zero elements uh, for this specific range, but in total, we've seen 13 elements. And here you can see the leaves where we know that, okay, this is for the eight, 
and we've seen seven instances of eight. And the trick here is that you can play with the information. Um, and so you can compress this data structure and lose information. So for example, this node here, which is basically saying that, okay, we have like one value of 1,000, you can remove it and you can merge it to its parent node and say, okay, instead of maintaining that we have uh, one element of 1,000, I know that we had one element between zero and uh, 1K. Um, and again, you, you lose information, but you gain um, space. And the basic concept of this algorithm is that you can do it in a way where both your error uh, and your memory is bounded. So this looked like a good starting point. Oh, and this is basically the lookup. So what you do in the lookup is if somebody says, okay, give me the median, then you translate this into a rank query. So if you have 13 elements in this very simple example, your rank is seven. So you're looking at the seventh uh, element. And so you iterate the tree until you find the node that you're looking for, and then you return the range of the node. In this case, is a good case because like the range is basically just the number eight, but you might end up with another node and then you'll provide the full range, which includes the error. So basically it's two operations. One is the lookup and the other is the insert together with the compression that you would do periodically based on uh, if you kind of running out of memory. So initially, the, the reason the idea behind this talk is to propose a new BPF map. Um, but after kind of reflecting on it, I realized that this doesn't really make sense um, because like this data structure is not fundamental as arrays and hash maps. And there are probably, I don't know, tens of different implementations you would want to do for having quantiles. And so it's better to implement these data structures in BPF. And um, I'm, to be honest, I haven't been following all the latest developments uh, in, in the list. So I, I think there are many things that can help doing that. So the first approach, which is, can work with not very recent kernels, is that you can take existing maps and implement the same idea. So for example, you can take a hash map and then you can store the tree using a key to the hash map and every dereference of a pointer would basically be an insert operation. You would need something like BPF loop to kind of do the iteration where you traverse the tree and then uh, a lock for the data structure so, basic, so that you don't have concurrent writers or readers. But um, this would work. I haven't done it, but I think it should work. So that would be a first step. The second step is to look at this kind of what I call here modern BPF um, and see whether we can actually write the traversing code in BPF. And again, I don't have an implementation about this, but I think um, kind of these ideas that uh, were developed for these graph data structures, the list and the arbitraries are really good foundations to start building on that. And basically the idea of having owning references and non-owning references map really well to this tree as well. And having something like an open coded iterator loop where basically you iterate the tree would be a good approach, I think. Uh, how well will it work? I don't really know, but I think like having an implementation BPF where you can actually have like a custom binary tree where you can do lookups and insertions is a really good exercise and see how these new facilities, uh, how far can they get. So that's kind of one part. Um, the second part is, okay, let's say that we fix this problem somehow and we have a map implemented in BPF. What we want in Tetragon, uh, and I'm guessing in many other applications, is to be able to access this map from user space. And so 
basically perform like the lookup implement, uh, operation that we did in eBPF in from user space. So as far as I can tell, like the only way that we can do that is using something like BPF program, where we basically set up things so that um, we call into the map and then somehow we figure out the interface. Um, but this is not very flexible, I think, and it's a bit tricky. So another thing I was thinking was basically having like a map where the operations of the map are implemented using BPF. So basically, if you have the BPF code for the lookup operation, then you would be able to use the map interface from user space to say, okay, like perform the lookup operation, and then it will execute the BPF code for the lookup and give you back the result. And the idea would be to use the existing map interface to do that. And kind of some ideas about how to do this. So I think we already passed like file descriptors on, on linking. So basically, you can maybe pass the file descriptor of the program when you have this map. And then I think something like BPF struct ops is a good first kind of thing to see whether you can use it to implement something that looks like the map operations so that you can then kind of have the methods for uh, for the operations. Um, yeah, that's all I had. Thank you. Are there, que are there any questions, feedback? Uh, you can probably guess what my preferred approach is, <laughs> but um, I, w I wanted to ask... Uh, I, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we talked about this, I think, during lunch, but I, I do think that this is a, a good use case for the graph collection stuff. Um, I think one follow-up question I had was, uh, you're essentially making use of the Max Alum's map feature. Uh, I'm curious whether it's possible to uh, adjust the data structure to change Max Alum's. For example, like I'm, I'm willing to trade more space for higher quality data. I already have some data in the data structure. Can I add some more nodes? Uh, from the data structure perspective, you can definitely do that. Um, so, the, like, there are bounds, and then you can you can have nodes for doing that. So, the data structure itself um, definitely supports that. Cool. I think that that like is uh, an additional push towards using the new KFUNK and K-pointer infrastructure just because that's tough to do using BPF maps. I definitely share your concern about the story for accessing KFUNKs, K-pointers from user space not really being super well fleshed out yet. Uh, I definitely think that's currently an issue. Uh, and I also just wanted to say, I, when you were on that slide that was proposing to do it using the new graph collection stuff, I pretty much agree with your implementation ideas, uh, especially like open coded iterators, open code as much of it in BPF as possible, et cetera, et cetera. It's definitely worth a try and uh, I can, I'm definitely interested in making verifier changes if necessary uh, to make it happen. So have you heard um a more recent version of a sketch data structure called T-Digest? Yes. So I think a T-Digest doesn't really require a tree structure. It could be, it has the same implementation. In that same implementation, it's basically an array. And in that array, and also doesn't require a kind of a, uh, you can just map that array to the user space. And the user space just gets it from the array content to get the, the quantiles. Uh, I actually tried this uh, the T-Digest like a half a year ago. I think it could be totally implemented in the BPF uh, without uh, changes in the kernel and uh, doesn't use this uh, k-pointers or, or, or it's a special data structures like uh, maps or something. Uh, and uh, the only thing that probably needs to be make it better is just uh, T-Digest requires uh, some sorting, requires uh, sorting the data you stored in that array. That's probably something a little difficult right now for BPF2, but you can use a two-level BPF uh, loop to implement a simple bubble search uh, to make it sorting. 
So with that, I think we can I can already get a very pretty accurate. Some depends on the configuration. I get accurate about the stream of the data, and implement it in tdigest purely in BPF. But the one thing I, after I implemented that, I thought is that uh, why not just export the data through RIM buffer and do the estimation by pulling the RIM buffers and do the purely do the thing in the user space. Um, I think uh, the trade-off here is that uh, in you using RIM buffer, you may have some data loss. But if you don't care about the data loss and uh, doing it in the user space, uh, could be could be better because uh, in the in the kernel, if you do this uh, in in the place, uh, I don't know Q digest for T digest. It has this batch operation. For example, if you have uh, n elements in the array, the first n minus one element is an O one operation, but the last element will be have a sorting that requires a, a n log n, and then you have this inconsistency or inconsistency in your latencies for per element processing. But if you're doing it the, in, the, in the BPF, that's in place uh, processing may have its latency inconsistency. But if you pull the data through the buffer and do it in the user space, that uh, probably will not be a problem. That's just uh, some. Uh, so for the T-digest, yeah, like I've, I've, I've 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 had a look at the data structure. Um, I didn't try to to kind of implement it. Um, so if you have this implementation somewhere available, I would appreciate the link. Uh, so I, I think it makes sense. Like I, I haven't looked at the details, so I cannot comment um, yeah, like quick, yeah. how to implement it. But the second part, uh, I do have an opinion that like what we've seen specifically in Tetragon is that we could, we will induce a lot of overhead if we kind of push the events to to user space. Not only for the processing, but also for the copies. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. I just say, so the use case is again like a couple hundred gig NICs, right? And you can't throw eighty million events into user space, right? So if you want to get like quantiles of say like packet lengths over a over a NIC or something, right? So it's just not feasible to really push that many events to user space. So that's the that's the problem with that. I mean, we 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 do do similar things like that to solve this today. Push things to user space or summaries of things and then try to build quantiles from user space or we hard code the buckets so we don't have this ability to compress and shrink. Like, so we have a lot of that stuff today, but we have to make a lot of assumptions about the data we're gonna get. Something like this would allow us to, to be a lot more flexible with how we, how we build those percentages and stuff, so. And, and the other thing you lose is the ability to react in line in BPF code if something happens. Because you, you can check, for example, like, OK, I have this new value. Is it over the 99th percentile? Because if it's yes, then it, like, it's a very simple anomaly detection algorithm to say, OK, like, something's wrong here. Like, this value is beyond the 99th percentile. And it's like, I mean, you can do it in user space, but yeah, it's, you, you get some more flexibility about what to do if you do it in kernel. Um, could you go back to the slide where you talk about how you could access it from user space? So there's one where you say prog, prog run or something? Yeah. So you kind of uh, mentioned that that would be cumbersome. Could you elaborate a little bit? Why and how it would so, be cumbersome? Um, so like if you access a BPF map from user space, then let's say you do a lockup operation, it's clear what the keys are and the values are. So you have like a data structure interface, more or less. Um, and again, like I don't know another way to do it, but uh, like the only thing I could think of is PPF program, which means that you would have to set up like some sort of program, let's say an XDP program, and you would have to pass your input, um, whether for the lookup or for the insert operation, into between data and data end and then somehow get it back. So it's, you need to like do some additional work. It, the, you don't need XDP. You can have like any tracing program and just context is your own. Like it will have key as a key. That's the only thing. You don't need like special XDP to construct it. You just two different programs. Your real XDP program sharing a map and you collect all of the stuff there. And on the side, have your tiny little program that not XDP, just tracing, or syscall style program, and the key, that's the only context, and the output, and whatever you want. 
and you just use that. So effectively, it's a sys call code code into the kernel with arbitrary input, arbitrary output. So you can do that today already with the existing program? Okay. So, so then would like program would be the approach to do that, or is there another way to do that? Program is yeah. the thing to do. Um, what I was wondering also in the discussion earlier with like how to access the other, like we've had multiple like data structures and how do we access them from, from user space? Like could we, I don't know, extend program to basically say you can actually call a BPF function directly? And okay, I just need to look at that, I guess. Cool. I, I guess the, the other benefit, which is a small benefit, is that like if you have a program which implements a map, then it's kind of abstracted and you can use it both from BPF programs and, but it's a convenience, it's not, uh, it doesn't make a big difference. I did the old one, cute digest. Sorry, I just came. So what's the, what's the question? Like, I think tdigest is a nice data structure. We used it in both in VPF and non-VPF context. It's, it's I, great. Is there an implementation which is open source? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. Can you send me a link? Sure. Thanks. Yeah. We, we actually have someone implement. Oh, it was Dan, Dan Schatzberg. Uh, he implemented it like on VPF. There are like a few different ways to implement it, like using ABL trees, using like uh, arrays, sorted arrays, merged arrays, and stuff like this. Arrays, obviously, is like easier to do in VPF. Uh, so uh, I was talking about the different data structure, which is Qdigest, which is kind of. So, so the guy who invented Tdigest, it's like Ted Dunning from Map R or whatever. I know. He, he kind of like implemented Tdigest because Qdigest was like too slow, too big, and uh, his his use case was like a streaming applications, right? So like you have like tons of data and you want to like maintain uh, percentiles and all stuff. So like he was designing Tdigest for that use case, and that's a great use case. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've read the paper, yeah. All right, cool, thanks. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>